Today, we're going to talk to you about the BRICS-CAD vision for building information modeling. We think that the development of a BIM should be a byproduct of your design process with full respect for you and your art as an architect and a designer. Hi, I'm Don. My colleagues, Julie and Robert, are joining me here today on stage. And Heidi Hewitt, uh, our Director of Partner Development, Ana Maria Romeo, are standing by to answer your questions. So please, if you have any questions um, throughout the webinar, please use the question panel to enter them. We'll answer them as soon as we can. Today, I'll kick it off. Uh, I'll spend just a few minutes explaining the BricsCAD product family and the core tenants of our BIM strategy. Then Julie's gonna take you through the BIM workflow. Uh, Robert will take us home uh, discussing compatibility, learnability, and ease of administration for the BricsCAD family of CAD products. So first off, who is Brixis? We're a global provider of CAD, BIM, mechanical design, and common data environment products uh, brought to market under the BricsCAD and Brixis 24-7 brands. We're a part of Hexagon AB. And even though we're part of this large multinational organization, it's important for you to know that Brixis has been around uh, as a company for almost 20 years. And we have Brixis product users in 110 countries. Our corporate HQ is in Ghent, Belgium. And we have 200 employees in the Brixis division spread across the globe in eight different countries. So we are here to serve you. What is BricsCAD? Well, BricsCAD is a family of CAD products. They are the cost-effective alternatives to the popular CAD or LTCAD, BIM, and mechanical design products that you use today. What do I mean when I say product family? Well. Imagine 2D, 3D, BIM, and MCAD in a single product, a single interface. This is the product that we call BricsCAD Ultimate. Now, when you download the 30-day free trial of BricsCAD, you get BricsCAD Ultimate. So when you download and try the product, you're getting all of these additions in that single installer package, and you can try all or any of them. When you decide to buy, your license code then enables your addition. So you only have to download BricsCAD once and you're ready to go. You can convert your trial to a production uh, version by simply entering a valid license key. And all of this is backed up by Brixis 24-7, our cloud-based uh, collaboration and data storage environment, which links to each of the BricsCAD editions via an in-product panel. Uh, that allows you to communicate, collaborate, upload, download, view, and version files across the net. So today we're talking especially about BricsCAD BIM. But just remember throughout the presentation that BricsCAD is one product with multiple editions all working together. So why BricsCAD BIM? Well, first, it's based on open standards like DWG, and IFC. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, BricsCAD products are extremely familiar. So this helps you preserve your existing 2D and 3D design and drafting workflows. You can use the skills you already have, leverage them in BricsCAD, and let them help you get productive in hours or maybe a day instead of weeks or months like other products. Now, the AI workflows in BricsCAD BIM focus on this concept of a continuous level of development of a BIM. So you can start out in solid masses with no regard for families or any of that. We like to call it digital clay. Then you can classify BIM objects automatically. You can use tools like AutoMatch to uphold design standards and reuse themes across projects. Then, using the Propagate workflow, you can ensure that your BIM is truly a digitally accurate virtual twin of the built environment. Um, and when LOD is continuous, construction documentation and quantity takeoffs are, are very, very accurate. And we'll talk more about that in a minute also. Best of all, BricsCAD is quite affordable. 
And after Julie's demonstration, Robert's going to tell you a lot more about how easy it is to deploy and manage BricsCAD in your company. So you didn't get into your current CAD system with the intent of being trapped in a proprietary format, but you might be. By embracing open standards, BricsCAD allows you to use a universe of third-party tools to leverage open industry standard DWG and IFC-based workflows. You can create your own path with BricsCAD's open formats, and you're never going to be held hostage to a proprietary file format. This offers you maximum freedom of choice. So we don't want to lock you into a proprietary software catalog either. We want to interoperate with everyone across the industry, again, based on DWG and the Open BIM Industry Foundation classes, or IFC. We like to say, don't ever forget what you already know. That's kind of Homer Simpson-ish. But anyway, the idea is that, you know, a familiar interface, uh, user interface is one thing. That'll get you a ways down the road. But a familiar overall user experience is what will really help today's AutoCAD users move to BricsCAD in a very short time. Um, both BricsCAD and BricsCAD BIM help keep training costs down for users who are moving from 2D to 3D and then to BIM because all of the workflows build on what you already know today. So let's talk about that BIM workflow, which Julie is going to detail to you next. Um, the BIM workflow starts in accurate 3D solids, just like you'd create a massing model in some other type of uh, modeling product. Remember though, that massing model is CAD accurate. And again, there's no need to concern yourself with families and classifications. You just create and model freely. Um, the materials can be added to that model. You can render it for study and presentation. Everything you'd need to do in an upfront conceptual design review can be done directly inside of Bricks CAD BIM. Then we leverage AI-based routines to increase LOD consistently with menu, minimal manual effort. That's hard to say, minimal manual effort. Um, that really ensures at the end that we have accurate takeoffs and consistent drawing extraction, regardless of where you query the model. Um, and that's super important. I think the most important thing to most of our users is when LOD is continuous, that means that you can extract drawings at any point in the overall design process, anytime you want. And those drawings are fully associative back to the model. So if the BIM changes, the drawings will also. And Julie's gonna actually show you that today. Sounds impossible, right? It's gotta be impossible. There has to be something wrong with this scenario. It's not possible. Well, listen to one of our customers and what he has to say about BricsCAD BIM. So here's what Haristo Gunchev, the managing director of Prototype, uh, uh, architectural facade manufacturer says, and I quote, if you're an engineer who's used to working in 2D, it is much easier to start working in 3D with BricsCAD than with any other tool because you can just follow the same intuitive pattern. And, and unquote, that's what we've been saying so far is the fact that you already know how to use BricsCAD and all of the 2D drafting and 3D modeling skills that you have today from your other CAD package move directly into BricsCAD with minimal to no relearning. That allows you to start from 80% to get to the 100% that you want to be at to be totally productive with BIM. There is no other path to BIM that's easier than the one that we deliver in BricsCAD BIM. So with that great buildup, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Julie Kavarian, and she's gonna take us through the BricsCAD BIM user workflow. So again, she'll start out with conceptual modeling with solids, the digital clay concept. Then she'll show you how our AI-based features like Bimify and AutoMatch and Propagate enable this concept of continuous level of development. And then she'll show you a bit more about how we address the creation of construction documents using workflows that are probably already pretty darn familiar to you. When Julie's done, we'll hand it over to Robert. So without any further ado, Julie, you have the screen. I hope <laughs> you're ready to roll. 
All right, thank you very much. We're going to start with modeling. And at Brooks, Brooks, we believe that you should be able to start your BIM project in the conceptual design phase where you can freely model your design without worrying about BIM data. So here we have a model of a villa that has a curved outer shell. Now this image was created with our Enscape plugin. Now let's take a look at that model within BricsCAD BIM itself. And we'll also now start from scratch to show you how you might start modeling a building like this using the tools that you're already familiar with. Starting first with geometry or the art of amassing model. Here's a box. It's a fully editable ACES solid that can be drawn with the accuracy of CAD. This creates a solid. The solid can be further edited, copy, move, rotate. And we can even combine these two solids into one with a Boolean operation. All pretty familiar, <clears throat> excuse me. To create the rounded ends, we simply apply the familiar fillet command to multiple edges at the same time to quickly give us the rough shape of the building. To create a shell, we can create two offset boundaries from the solid faces. And because BricsCAD automatically detects boundaries, that gives us two regions that we can simply and easily start push pulling through the volume. This is the digital clay aspect that Don was referring to. With the shell almost complete, now we can focus on building the interior walls. And we have a number of dedicated modeling tools specifically for architectural design in BricsCAD BIM. First, by simply offsetting the perimeter of the floor slab, we can then use Quick Draw to quickly trace over that 2D geometry to create 3D BIM classified walls, as, as you'll see here. We can see that the cursor snaps to the lines and with two clicks, we create a rectangular room that can be further modified. While doing this, it's easy to accurately align the cursor to already placed walls. And we can also use these shooting dimensions to nearby walls to add CAD accurate values, or we can simply use the snapping behavior of the cursor. Now, when you see a wall or the edges of the cursor highlighted in blue, that means the cursor is snapping to already placed walls. And note that when those newly created walls connect to existing walls, the connections between them are intelligently resolved. Again, this is solid geometry that's being created, so we can continue to model it. For example, uh, the next thing we'll want to do is to connect the inner walls with the outer shell, and we can simply select the end faces and then use the connect to nearest tool and now they're connected. We can also select the top faces which are all coplanar to those interior walls and connect them all at once to the shell. So this is starting to look like the building that we showed during the preview. Now we need to add some windows and we can just use simple lines to create boundaries. And again, because BricsCAD automatically detects those boundaries, they can be used for the input for the window create tool. And now we have a window. It's a window that was created on the fly and it was also parameterized on the fly, meaning that after it's been inserted, we can still change its dimensions, like the width or the depth or the thickness. BricsCAD BIM is not restricted to rectangular window shapes, so on this side of the building, we can add more glazing in a similar manner. This time, we'll extend all the way to the curved outer shell. And as you can see, the window is quickly created. To finish up this short introduction to our modeling engine, let's talk about components. We have a components library with parametric components that you simply drag and drop onto your model. For example, a door. And after placing the door in the model, it will interact intelligently with its wall solid so you can still adjust its position or the size of the door 
by using the parameters and then both the door and the wall adjust. Adding your own components to the component library is easy. Simply model something in 3D, add some constraints and parameters and you're done. So I hope this very short demo gave you an idea of how we model in BricsCAD. And now we'll move to the next step in the BIM workflow by quickly and easily transforming this 3D model to a BIM model. Don, did you want to say something? Yeah, I did. How could you tell? <laughs> well, so I think the thing that's really important here is the fact that we're working in CAD accurate solids, but we have all the flexibility of, of a push-pull modeler, much like what you're familiar with probably in prototyping tools that you use today. At the same time, we're not concerned about families or classifications. Of course, when Julie placed the door and window, they were automatically classified. But now we have to think about adding the entity classifications to the solids that she modeled. And I think you have a little trick for us to, to, to make that easier, Julie, right? Yes, we do. So how do we do this? Well, here's another model. And if we hover over the parts, we'll see that these are just 3D solids. And when we look at the properties of one of the solids, we see that there's really not much information there. And we can also see this by looking at the structure browser where we essentially have a list of solids. There is no BIM information. There is no BIM elements like walls or slabs or columns. <clears throat> so how would you go about adding BIM data to the model? Well, it's pretty easy in BricsCAD. The first option is to do it manually, manually. Simply select a solid and choose a classification, maybe a roof. From now on, this is simply a roof. It will appear under building elements in the structure browser as a roof. And when we look at its properties, we see many of the BIM properties for roofs have now been added. This is very easy to do. However, it would be frustrating and tedious to have to do this for the entire model manually. And that's why we created BIMify. With one click, BIMify automatically classifies all of the 3D solids in the model for you. And so in an instant, we went from a list of solids to a building with floors and walls and slabs and even columns and beams. BIMify also created the section and elevation planes for us, which will be the starting point of the 2D documentation generation later on. And it also found the rooms too. So let's take a look at another example this time a structural model. This is composed of over 600 solids and it's just geometry. Again, there's no BIM data here. This could have been an import where only the geometry came through. So imagine if you had to classify all of this manually, it'd be a nightmare in this structural maze to find the correct elements and then select them. So luckily, again, we can use BIMify and this time choose the option to detect the structural profiles for these elements. So how did we build BIMify? Well, we used machine learning techniques to build the classifier, which was then trained on a large number of architectural, structural, and MEP models. From that, it learned how to classify geometry all by itself. And it's doing that for us right now. And very shortly, we'll see that we have columns and members and beams all automatically identified for us. And if we go to the properties of one of those beams, we can see that BIMify has also managed to detect the profile in the solid, automatically match them to our profile library and add all of those profiles to the element as well. So a tool like BIMify allows you to start modeling freely without having to deal with BIM information. Then, with one click, make the transition to BIM when you're ready. It's an easy way to quickly create your BIM model. Now let's see how to continue to increase the level of development in the BIM model in our next topic. I'm actually pretty amazed at what you just did, Julie, with that structural model. That was actually, that actually came from GT Strudel. So, I mean, again, we're talking about this ability to import data and use open data formats. Um, the classifier actually looks at those profiles. It understands that they are structural elements. It not only is able to determine 
it's a structural element, but it also knows which series it is. So it can assign that data to the extended entity data that's attached. So you know the profile and you know the type of building element. So I think that's that's the, the one thing that really sets us apart from other products uh, on the market today is the ability to use the computer to actually do what computers are good at and let the designer use her expertise to do what people are really good at. Was that a good summary, you think? Absolutely. I yes. Love it. <laughs> okay. Here we have an office building. It's an estate right after Bimify. So that means everything's been classified. There's floors and walls and rooms. If we look more closely at one of the section planes, we see that the walls are generic, meaning that there's no specific material information applied to the walls yet. We need to add another level of development by applying specific BIM compositions to the building elements. Now, BIM compositions are simply a collection of materials, or as we call them, plies. And we have a number of predefined, as well as user-defined compositions that you can simply select and then drag and drop onto a wall in the model. And we'll see the layer structure or the plies appear. And if we increase the level of development a bit, we'll also see those rendered materials. Now we can add compositions to multiple elements at once. So if we select these two kind of front walls here and drag and drop the composition onto that selection set, the composition is attached to both elements at once. And again, the wall thickness will be adjusted to accommodate those new plies that we add. At the back of the building, let's choose a different composition because this is a blind facade and we can just use a simpler composition here, so we will. Now let me point out that we're only assigning compositions to a few elements here. And as you can already guess, we won't be doing this for the entire model again, because at this point it would become a tedious and repetitive task that we want to automate. So we've got one more uh, material here to apply. And this is why we created AutoMatch. AutoMatch has a mode called Autocomplete. When you select it, it will start analyzing the design choices you've already made and tries to find a pattern. Once it finds that pattern, it simply applies it to the rest of the model. Essentially, again, in a few clicks, we have assigned compositions to the model. It's also cut on to our design intent in the back to use that different composition along that back wall. And here on the interior wall compositions, you see that they've been added and the slabs have also been added throughout the model. AutoMatch is another example of how we tried to leverage machine learning techniques to identify and solve repetitive tasks in your BIM workflow so you can focus on the creative and technical aspects of designing a building. So let's save this model because we'll use it again in just a moment. And now let's have a look at a second building. This is a smaller building, but a similar style as the first. Maybe it's in the same project or it's on the same site. So it'd be logical to, to assign it the same kind of materials. And again, we can use auto match. This time with an option to specify an external file as the source for the patterns and the materials. So we'll use the file we just saved and let auto match analyze that file bring over the patterns and the materials to this model. In contrast to the BIMify algorithm that we saw earlier, this is not pre-trained. AutoMatch uses machine learning techniques to do an online, on-the-fly analysis of the model to try to identify the key features that determine which composition goes where. And again, you saw it kept that back wall a little bit different. So we've come a long way in increasing the level of development of this model, and we can still go further. We'll discuss detailing in the next example. Oh, but first, don't you want to talk about propagate? Because we should probably increase LOD a little bit more before yes. we get to detailing. Anyway, I think the coolest thing, uh, that I love the fact that you're able to like automatically create a set of standards based on an existing model. I mean, that's the coolest thing. So you don't have to go through an explicit step of creating a standards library or a series of standard uh, 
elements that you store in some kind of thing that you apply to something else. You can just simply take an existing BIM model and say, use this as a reference for auto match and show me how we can propagate <laughs> or pull forward those standards that we uh, we upheld in the other model into this new BIM model. Is that what I'm seeing here, Julie? Yes, that's exactly right. I'm the summarizer. <laughs> okay, so here we have that same model again. Now, if we look more closely at a section though, we'll see that the floor slabs and the outer walls don't quite connect in a realistic way. Again, our philosophy is to let you freely model this detail the way you want it in full 3D. In this case, we simply start push-pulling some of those plies of the floor slab into the outer wall. And again, although this is very flexible, obviously it would be nearly impossible to do this for the entire model manually, and that's why we created Propagate. For Propagate, you select the elements involved in a certain detail connection, and then it will isolate the detail for you and go searching through the rest of the model for other locations where this detail can be applied. Suggestions are presented and we can choose to accept them or not. If we do, then Propagate will actually transfer those details to the suggested locations, as you can see here, and also at the side of the building. So we can cut another uh, uh, section here and take a look there. Now, I do want to point out that this is not just a view you have in 2D sections, and we'll see that when we isolate the floor slab, we see that the actual geometry has been altered throughout the entire model by the application of this detail. And that's important because that means your quantity takeoffs of a model detail like that will be accurate. Another application of Propagate is in structural detailing. Here's a very large structural model. It has columns and members and beams, all with correct profiles. But as you can see, none of the connections have been detailed yet, except for one at the very end. And here we've added some braces and a plate to finish off the detail, again, by freely modeling. Now we can use Propagate to isolate this detail and let it search the rest of the model for other locations where it could be inserted. Once it has located those, Again, sections will be presented with a small preview of the detail. And when we accept the suggestions, all the details will actually be inserted at each of these connections, and they will be identical to the example detail. So this is one workflow for working with Propagate, where you model one detail in the model and then let Propagate it, apply it through the model. But we've also created a details panel where you can store your details for reuse in other models and other projects. If we open one of those details from the panel, we see that it's just a small DWG file with one instance of the detail. Applying the detail to our bigger model is simply a matter of dragging it, dropping it onto the model again. Now I should mention here, that at no point during the creation of this detail or the structural model did we have to specify connections or structural connection notes or anything like that. That means this also works well with imported geometry, for instance, via IFC. Propagate is able to scan through the model and identify all connections on the fly, filter them down to the locations where the chosen detail might fit, and then it shows only these locations of suggestions. When we accept again, all the nuts and the bolts and the plates of this detail will be transferred to those suggested locations. And in this case, Propagate will have also trimmed the beams so that the plates and the bolts can be inserted. All this from geometry modeled by the user. So what about a case where you have a detail in your library that you want to apply to a certain target model? but that geometry is slightly different from the detail you've already modeled, as here. We have a roof slab meeting the outer wall at an angle that is not 90 degrees, but our detail in the library is at 90 degrees. Well, luckily our details can be parametrized. That means there are a number of parameters that can change the shape of the detail. So for instance, if we change this angle parameter to 80 degrees, 
Now the detail has morphed to accommodate that new angle. That means that Propagate can also leverage these extra degrees of freedom to make the detail fit more target situations. For example, here, it's able to propagate this detail all around the roof edges with three different angles involved. And remember, by the way, that back wall had a different composition and because of that, it has a different thickness. So this model now is fairly complete and it was time to start creating 2D documentation from the BIM model. I, I, I think it's absolutely cool that you can take an existing detail and you can parametrically drive that detail or, or set up a series of parametric options that that detail can then drive through the model. So, I mean, just the amount of flexibility that that brings, um, you know, I think back to this concept of using families um, and, and, and having to go through this difficult manual parameterization process to create a new family, where here in BricsCAD BIM, you can simply take existing geometry, use the parameterized workflow to automatically create a parametric um, detail, and then leverage that detail throughout the model using tools like Propagate. I mean, I think that this really helps lay out this concept of continuous level of development. And I think, I hope people can see how this type of automated level of development management helps you keep a much more accurate model in the end. So not only for drawing takeoff, but also for um, schedule takeoff too, right? Absolutely. Yep. Let's take a look at that. So now I'll show you a very high level view of the 2D documentation that you can create in BricsCAD BIM. And again, we'll use these same two buildings. Once the models have been BIMified and you're ready, you can create your project from the BIM project browser. Simply click create the project button. You'll also define the models and the section planes to be included in your model. I've already done that. So 2D documentation is generated from the section planes in the models you've chosen. Schedules can also be created like door or window furniture schedules. Individual plan sections, elevations and or details are created in viewports on the layout sheets. And in BricsCAD BIM, you'll probably have several individual drawing model files and you work with them the same way you do today as external references or XREFs loaded into a single file. Now BricsCAD BIM preserves your 2D workflow and the automatically generated sheet is simply a viewport on a layout based on a section plane. And here we'll look at floor zero of the second building. We see that the basic plan is generated, but we don't see much else on that plan. So let's first take a look at the actual model of the second building and specifically at the floor zero section plane. Okay, I see the furniture is not displaying on our sheet. Well, that's easy to update because BricsCAD BIM uses layers to control visibility, just like you're doing today in BricsCAD. Looking at the floor plan though, I don't like the hatch pattern that's shown here on this exterior wall. That's not a problem either because I can control what hatch pattern displays here in this plan view as well as other views. From the model, we can see that this wall has a composition of cavity wall front. From the BIM composition panel, I can easily set the hatch patterns in our compositions to comply with my project or corporate standards. And the defined compositions can be shared among projects to help maintain the consistency in your documentation. I can also change the pattern displayed in the elevation and 3D rendered views too. Once the viewport's updated, we see the updated hatch pattern on the sheet. So this gives you a lot of control and flexibility over the display of your documentation. All right, now I'm happy with how the plan looks. And the next step is to add some annotation to the sheet. I'll be adding dimensions using the standard annotation tools in BricsCAD, which again, you are already familiar with. 
As you can see, creating 2D documentation in BricsCAD BIM uses tools that are both unique to BIM, as well as those that you are already comfortable with, like XREFs and layers and dimensions and viewports. But what happens once those dimensions are placed if the model changes? Well, let's find out by making some changes to the model. Let's start by extending a wall. And notice that the adjoining walls maintain their connection to the wall that moves. And we'll delete a sofa. Oh, and just to have some fun, let's, let's flip that door swing. All right, once the viewport is updated, we'll see the changes on the sheet. So keep your eyes on the wall with the dimension lines. And notice, that those dimension lines move to the new position of the wall. Schedules are based on data extraction definition files or DXDs, and you can use the included DXDs, you can customize them, or you can create schedules on the fly too. Now this window schedule includes a count of similar items and an image of the window itself. So to wrap up, let me show you some sheets that are further along to see what's possible. We'll start with a sheet that has several floor plans and zoom in here to where there's a column and a tag. Now the information for the tag was actually pulled from the structural XREF sheet. So it's reading through XREFs. We'll take a look at another sheet and we've got some sections. We can see all of the furniture is there and the floor elevation callouts. Detail sections are made with the detail section box. And we've included an Enscape rendered view for better visualization of the building. Now, also, I want to mention that if you include a title block in your project sheet template when creating the project, then that will be included in the sheet generation. Okay, Don, I'll send it back to you. Hi, uh, Julie. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that you were able to compress all that down into 22 <laughs> minutes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> But I, I think that, that I hope that everyone can see that the story at Brixis has been, you know, to, to bring the best, most modern AI enabled CAD tools to market, but always keeping in mind this concept that you should never throw away what you already know. So I hope that everyone saw uh, a workflow that actually looks like something that you may already understand and the high compatibility in both user interface and user experience with the industry standard CAD product means that you can potentially move to BIM in days instead of weeks or months. I think that's the real story we want to tell. And, and remember, BricsCAD BIM is one edition of BricsCAD. There are five. So everything you need from 2D drafting through 3D modeling, civil site design, uh, BIM, and of course, mechanical product design, all integrated based on DWG and IFC. Julie, great job. I'm gonna hand the command over to Mr. Robert Green, and Robert's gonna take you through the BricsCAD value proposition and some, some brief comments on implementation, ease of implementation. Thank you, Robert. Awesome. Hopefully you uh, see my screen there. And thanks very much, Don. And great job, Julie. Um, yeah, it actually shows quite a lot of power that's very easy to use. And in my title at Brixis is Director of Implementation. So it really is kind of my responsibility to make sure that companies like yours can implement BricsCAD, BricsCAD BIM, whatever tool that you would like to, to use in our product suite. Uh, simply and that you understand what your options are and how easy it's going to be for you to migrate. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and some of the value and pricing information that you may want to know based because what you've seen is intriguing. So you'd like to know a little bit more about your options. So let's go ahead and jump in there and uh, we'll have a look at that. Now, the first thing that uh, Don alluded to at the beginning of the presentation is the concept of open data formats, uh, industry standard formats like DWG. And one thing that I want to state plainly, we do not import DWG, we don't export DWG, we simply open it and save it exactly as you are already used to. 
you can install BricsCAD in five minutes. Seriously, you really can. And you can be opening and saving the same DWG files that you've been using for decades without any modification whatsoever. It's that straightforward. It really does work just that simply. But for BIM, we're very aware that most of the BIM uh, that's going on out there in the world these days is not done in DWG, but ours is. Um, basically, we wanted to take the information that would be required to categorize and build the BIM and store it inside the DWG so that you had a very open industry standard format that you could move back and forth. So how do we categorize the information for our BIM model inside that DWG? Well, we use exactly the same scheme that IFC uses. IFC Industry Foundation Classes, which has basically been taken over by Building Smart International. We store all of our information in IFC format inside the DWG. So if you need to export a BIM to someone else who's not using uh, BricsCAD BIM, then you would simply write the IFC file out and send it to them. And it's just that straightforward. So we're seeing a large movement, especially in Europe right now, towards what is called open BIM. And most of this is based on IFC. It gives you several advantages. Number one, it's not vendor specific. So it moves around and it enables you to utilize a universe of third party plugins, uh, whether that's 4D analysis or rendering plugins, it opens your possibilities up for what you can do with BIM without being dependent on a single supplier. So this is a, a value statement that we really believe in at Brixis. You should be able to store your information in an industry standard DWG file and then use IFC to do industry standard open BIM. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, one other thing that comes up interestingly when we talk about BIM is the idea of getting manufactured products that live inside buildings into a BIM file. So what if you manufactured something like this escalator? Well, it's not a BIM design, it's a machine design, but architects are going to want that information in their BIM file so that they can do uh, checks for adjacency and build it into their architectural floor plans. So what we are able to do in BricsCAD, because everything is done in one product, we are able to maintain your mechanical designs in fully accurate representations in a DWG, which means all you have to do is categorize and IFC it out. This now becomes something that could be very, very easily pushed to an architect uh, for inclusion inside of their building. They may not want to know every single detail of every gear or nut or bolt, but they would be able to certainly represent the envelope and design around that component. And if you're in the manufacturing business and you really don't want to be in the BIM business, but you do want to get your information to people who use BIM, this becomes a very good way to do it. Notice that there were never any families. There was never any having to purchase another tool. You never had to depart from your DWG file standard. Very simple, keeps everything in the family and very straightforward and low cost for a mechanical or a manufactured building products vendor to get into the BIM game. Now, user interfaces you already know. What do I mean by this? Well, when we go into BricsCAD BIM, we're utilizing most of the interface components that your users would already know, typically from AutoCAD. So these would be things like ribbon tabs, pull down menus, tool palettes, the utilization of external references or sheet sets, templates to start files, plotter configurations and page setups to accurately capture PDF output, for example, so everything that you already know, processes you already understand, file types you already have, you can leverage and use immediately in BricsCAD BIM. And you perform your annotation in the same native DWG format using model and layout tabs, just as you always have, is now available to you inside a BIM tool. So you don't have to relearn annotative functions. You don't have to depart from a DWG file standard to do your 2D annotation. 
This is the real power of having everything in a single tool, and that's BricsCAD. Now let's do let's look a little bit at how affordable this is because it's very affordable. First things first, we still sell you perpetual software. It's our default mode of operation. Why? Because clients have told us that it's a valuable commodity for them. They like to actually own their software and run it for as long as their in IT infrastructure will allow them to run it. So for example, a BricsCAD BIM perpetual license, $1,850 with $555 per year on maintenance. You can see how this adds up over a three year total cost of ownership. Now, some companies want to subscribe or they want to subscribe just for some projects and that's fine. You certainly can with BricsCAD, not just BricsCAD BIM, but any flavor of BricsCAD that you like. It's your call. If you want perpetual licenses, that's fine. If you want to subscribe, that's fine too. If you want a mixture, that's fine as well. Um, it's your company, they're your requirements, so we should give you the licensing in a way that makes sense for you. Look at some of the costs here. At $1,400 per year for a subscription, you can be on BricsCAD BIM, and you can see how that adds up over a three-year cost of ownership. Now, all of this is suggested retail pricing. So let's take a look at the Autodesk AEC Collections, which is where Revit resides, and let's look at how that stacks up. We can see here at $26.95 per year, almost $9,000 over the course of a three-year subscription. So this is apples to apples. It's retail price to retail price. Let's draw a few conclusions. Number one, you can buy BricsCAD BIM for $1,000 less, a little more actually, than a one-year rental of the AEC collection. On a year-over-year -year basis, your maintenance is only 19% as much as an annual subscription to the AEC collection. And over a three-year cost of ownership calculation, you can actually own BricsCAD BIM for less than one year of rental. So the value is here. Uh, it's in this graph. So the, if you're looking for a cost favorable product that will allow you to gain BIM functionality and lower your total cost of ownership, BricsCAD BIM is definitely something you want to explore. Now, as Don mentioned, BricsCAD is a family of products in a single package. So this means that BricsCAD products will grow with you at your pace. Let's say, for example, you wanted to simply replace your existing 2D CAD product. You can do that with BricsCAD Pro. You can get your users in there using it immediately, and they can get out to a really fast start because BricsCAD is so simple to use for people who already know the leading CAD product out there. You can then start to add powerful AI features to that product. You've seen a lot of compelling AI features in Julie's demo, but there are others that are inside of the uh, default BricsCAD product offering, like Blockify, like Copy Guided, like Parametrize. So there's lots of powerful tools that you can use to bring the power up, even in the pro version of BricsCAD. Then you can go to BricsCAD BIM to take advantage of the full horsepower that you've seen in the demonstration today. All this allows you to ramp up your functionality, replacing all your tools with a consistent BricsCAD product offering, never leaving the familiar 2D environment that you already know, heavily leveraging the, knowledge, the product knowledge that your users already have to cut training and adoption time radically much, much cheaper than trying to teach your uh, non-BIM users another totally different BIM product, much easier to evolve forward with BricsCAD. All this in a single package. What does it take to upgrade to BricsCAD BIM? It takes a new license code. You do not have to download any new software. You do not have to create another deployment package. It really is that straightforward. Everything is in one installer. And from a licensing standpoint, let's recap. The licensing that we offer you supports your needs and your requirements affordably. We continue to offer licensing options that the competition does not because 
You've asked for it. You've said it has value to you. Let's recap. Perpetual licenses with maintenance offered as our standard offering. This is no longer being offered by our principal competition. Subscription, if you like, that can be mixed and matched with perpetual licenses, if you like. It's your choice. Same license manager, same systems. Uh, it's very easy. There's no named user model. Very, very straightforward to manage. You can use BricsCAD or BricsCAD BIM in any language version that we support. Simply download that language version and install it. Your licensing keys work. You can use it wherever you want to use it. There's no different contracts. There's no upcharge for any of this. So it's very straightforward. In fact, we like to say one license for planet Earth and we mean it because we don't care what you speak and we don't care where you sit. Your BricsCAD licensing still works for you. And we continue to offer network multi-user licensing. Some people call this floating. Uh, some people call this concurrent, but it, it is the licensing mechanism that is now being discontinued by our competition. BricsCAD has a silent install mode. It's SCCM push friendly. There are no named user requirements, no complex IT requirements to manage user accounts. And it's all contained in a 408 megabyte download file. That's the only thing you ever need to download. It's the only deployment you ever need to deal with. Get BricsCAD once and you're done. The biggest change you could encounter would be a license code. Now, I think that this is the smartest, most powerful, most full-featured collection of CAD tools that I've worked with. And I've been in the business a long time and I don't say that lightly, but don't believe me, try it for yourself. What you need to do is go download it and install it and see how it works. And to walk you through that process really quickly and wrap things up, I'm gonna hand it back to Don. Wow, <clears throat> Robert, that was really nice. I like the way that both you and Julie um, took what's a pretty complex subject, right? This concept of the move to building information modeling. I mean, there are entire PhD theses written around this, but the fact of the matter is, that the design of BricsCAD, the BricsCAD ultimate family of products allows this move to happen in the most seamless way. I, I also am really excited about the ability to integrate mechanical design components into a building information model. So this whole idea of saying manufactured building product suppliers now have a single product that allows them to design freely and then be able to share that data with the people who actually need to integrate it into their designs. Um, it's a workflow that really can't be beat and we're pretty proud to bring it to everyone. Um, quickly, Robert asked me to talk to you about how to download BricsCAD. So if you go to Brixis.com, uh, this is the current homepage at Brixis.com, up in the upper right-hand corner, you will see a button that says download. We tried to make this as easy as possible for you to get your hands on that 30 day free trial. So here's what you need to do. When you press download, if you don't have a Brixis account today, we're gonna ask you to create one. It just takes a few seconds. Um, this is our single sign-on uh, screen for all existing users of BrickSys and BricsCAD products. But what you'll see here is when you look at the bottom, if you don't have an account, you can register with your email. Now, we also support the ability with single sign-on to use your current Facebook or Google accounts, and we are working to also add LinkedIn to that list. So once you select register now, you'll be taken to the next page, which says almost there. Please fill in your credentials. There's some minor password rules down there at the bottom. Please use your work email so we can get a hold of you. Um, during the trial period, we're, we're not gonna spam you, we promise, but we'd love to be able to keep you up to date during that 30 day trial to make sure you have all the tools um, and, and trainings that you need to be able to really get the most benefit and profitability from that 30 free day trial. Um, 
30-day free trial, sorry. Um, then once you create your account, you'll go right to the BricsCAD Ultimate download page. Again, remember that that BricsCAD Ultimate installer includes the Classic Pro and Platinum editions along with BricsCAD BIM and BricsCAD Mechanical all free to use full commercial trial version for 30 days. Now, after you install BricsCAD, on the first launch, you will see the BricsCAD launcher. Now, there's uh, several different options that you have here, but the one that you want to use to activate your trial is, of course, the button that says Start Trial. When you click that, go out across the net, authorize your license and your 30 day trial begins. Um, I think that you've been shown how familiar BricsCAD is. If you're a current user of the industry standard CAD package, however, we realize you may have questions. Please feel free to reach out for help at any time. Send an email to us, trybrickscad at brixis.com. And we will be delivering more uh, webinars like this one over the next weeks and months. Um, it's, it's a great way to get a hold of people who are looking for CAD alternatives. And our goal is to show you just how easy it can be to move to BricsCAD. You can find information about future events at brixis.com slash events. Of course, your local reseller is also always available to help you through the process of trialing BricsCAD. They can also help you with third-party applications, hardware, and other things that you may need to complete uh, your CAD system installation. So please leverage your local resellers. Talk to us if you need help. We're here for you. Thank you so much, everyone. We're going to stay on for a couple of minutes to make sure we answer all of the questions that you've had today. But we want to thank everybody for taking the time to come and hear our story. Please stay safe. Take care of you and your people. And we'll be back same time next week. Thanks again.